yeah. Right. 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 So why don't we? Oh, could be. Why don't we go ahead okay. and um, start the meeting? We, um, it, you, you can see from the agenda, we're hoping to uh, vote on a number of the things that we've had in progress over the last two meetings. Um, and then there are going to be a number of updates, news that uh, we can provide, as well as I hope we can do some laying the groundwork for uh, how we're going to address the Pierce Island opportunity so that we can really get into that soon. Um, but first, before we do anything, uh, Susan Morrell, city attorney, is here. And I, I had asked Sean, since we've had some confusion about right to know law, which I know can be very confusing when you start to become part of a city committee. And I remember when I first got on the city council, I, my first reaction was, how are we ever going to get anything done if we have to um, pay attention to the right to know law? On the other hand, what you learn is you can, um, it, that really it's you just have to begin the habits of um, how you engage uh, so that there's transparency and that the public can be aware of the, any of the dialogues between you. When I first got on the council, believe it or not, email was relatively new in uh, city um, exchanges. And a lot of people didn't understand that the right to know law applied to uh, all transactions. And so uh, I thought it would be helpful for Susan and we can get it on the record just to clarify with us and we can ask any questions about how as a committee, as a city committee, we should be um, attending to the right to know law. Okay, thanks. It's a big job. <laughs> it is very confusing. Um, there are a lot of different provisions and they can be interpreted differently. Um, so from one lawyer to the next, just like everything else, you can get different different interpretations. But um, so I'm gonna do this in a sort of a global big picture way. Um, to talk about a little bit and then hopefully answer some direct questions that you have. Um, but the big picture is, you know, this is a constitutional right to have an open government. There's a provision in our constitution that says that our government should be open. And then the right to know law, as it's called, is actually a statute um, in the RSA's uh, 91 um, dash big A. And um, so the purpose of the right to know law is also to have public access um, to government business. So the public is entitled to know what their um, elected officials or appointed officials are doing on their behalf. And that's really why you have for your meetings, you have the notice requirements and um, you have the recording requirements and keeping minutes so that there's a record of whatever you are doing. So um, like everything else in the law, it runs by definition. So there is a specific definition of a public meeting and um, it sort of goes beyond what would be a formal meeting. So this is your formal meeting, you've given notice, you have a quorum, um, but any meeting of the body, of the public body, if you have a quorum, then we just decided that your quorum would be um, five or six. Six. Six, yeah. So, um, so if you have six people together um, that are part of this committee um, communicating together contemporaneously about the business at hand of this committee, then you're having a public meeting that should be noticed and, and comply with all of the other requirements of a public meeting. So that gets to what's not a public meeting. Um, so for a lot of people, it's confusing about, well, we're friends, you know, we're friends, we see each other socially, um, 
we're not talking business. Um, you know, we're celebrating somebody's birthday or there's some other event going on and there's, you know, six of us from this committee at that event. Is that a violation of the right to know law? So you have to remember that not only do you have to have a quorum, but you have to be talking about the business of the committee in order for it to be a public meeting. So you can all be in the same place as long as you are, um, as you said, you know, disciplined mm -hmm. and you don't talk about the business um, of the committee. So unfortunately, however, it's difficult to defend against a complaint when people are all together. And we had that come up with the city council this year where there happened to be a quorum at the stady after a meeting, which was really coincidental. There was no discussion of business, but the complaint was made in any way. And um, so we had to go through the process of interviewing everybody to see what happened and how it was they all ended up there and how long they had more than um, six or six people together at a same table. Um, it was all, you know, um, incidental. It wasn't planned um, and there was no business that was discussed. So we found that there was no violation of the right to know law. So you have in-person gatherings that could be meetings. As you said, the emails, if you have a quorum of people in an email discussing business. So you have to have each one of those steps for whatever you're talking about, emails, text messages, any other electronic communications, um, then that would all be subject to the requirements of noticing a public meeting and having a record. So again, if you're not discussing the business of the committee, then you're not having a public meeting. It might appear to people that you are. So it may be in, you know, the best decision to have a little discretion there, you know, so that you don't raise concerns or red flags for people, maybe to avoid the appearance that perhaps you're having um, an illegal public meeting, but um, strictly speaking, it's not, you're not prohibited from gathering as a group as long as you're not talking about business. If it's an incidental social um, encounter, it's not a public meeting. So again, it's all based on definition. So a public body, obviously includes any uh, municipality legislative body and it includes any committee of that legislative body. So you are a public body. So all these rules apply to you. Um, so any committee or subcommittee or subordinate body thereof or advisory committee there too are all public bodies. So, as you said, how are we going to get anything done? <laughs> um, so you have to read the definitions carefully. So um, let's go back and forth under 91A. So here's the definition of a public body and it refers to advisory committees. So then you have to look at the definition of an advisory committee. And that's any committee whose primary purpose is to consider an issue or issues and I'm underlining designated by the appointing authority. So this is where when Sean and I talk, there was a question, what's the difference between a subcommittee and a working group? Does it matter what we call ourselves? I think what matters is if you have say three people on this committee who on their own initiative wanna do something and bring it back to the committee, that then you're not acting as an advisory committee because you weren't designated, you weren't directed by the committee as a whole to go out and do it. If there is a vote, you know, say we want these people 
this number of people to form a subcommittee to examine this issue and report back, then that's a formal request. And now you've created an advisory committee, which is a public body, which is subject to the right to know. But if, so if, if that subcommittee is not a quorum, it's still a problem. It's still a problem. It's still a problem. So yeah. Susan, just to, and I'll use Mara and Jen as an example. We asked Mara and Jen to look at the, um, at, at the, uh, we had multiple criteria from different for selecting public art, asked them to look at it together and bring back to the committee a revised version. Obviously they looked at it together. Right. And we discussed it. And they talked about it and they brought right. it back to our committee. It comes to the public. In, Eventually in it comes committee. in a report back. Yeah. Right. So the tricky part is really, you know, what does it mean to be designated by the appointing authority? So in the definition of the advisory committee, it doesn't talk about quorum. It just talks about whether you were set up formally. So the legal advice would be the less formal that process is, the better in order for small groups of people to work on the mini. So the fact that the two of them volunteered to do it, yeah. we said, great. Yes. Um, then you're yes. not you're no. not a subcommittee. You're not advisory committee. Yeah. And then you are fine. Great. So just as an example, I, um, Chris and I volunteered to prepare a draft memorandum. Is that? Is I that hear it? the word volunteer. <laughs> no. So, so and I hate to have to, you know, it sounds like we're splitting hairs or playing games, but the overall purpose of this by the legislature is, you know, to have really the quorum or the, the, the official groups um, be subject to the right to know. If you have unofficial groups um, and, you know, working groups. Working unofficial groups. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then volunteers. you- volunteers. <laughs> of volunteers. It's yeah. wrong. Yes. Um, well, it's, it's difficult to, to parse this. Yes. And uh, like I said, you could talk to three lawyers and get three different opinions. Um, that's, that's how we stay in business. So, um, but when we're looking at when, I, as I'm looking at it, I'm looking at it in, you know, this sort of the strict interpretation of the words mm -hmm. that are used in the statute, which is how you're supposed to interpret statutory language. And in general, I can't see that this group would do anything where we'll be in small groups that wouldn't come to the full group. There won't be anything where two people get to decide something. You know, it, it comes to the full group for um, any deliberation. So the work would be transparent. Right. So part of the concern, however, with the right to know law is allowing the public to hear the deliberations of the public body. So um, that's why you record the meetings, you yep. have minutes, you, you have an opportunity for the public to attend your meetings. So there is that fine line. Um, it's not a quorum. It's not, you know, designated as a committee or a subcommittee of your group or an advisory committee. So reading the statute, you should be on sound ground. You have a question. Well, I just, I mean, it, we, the idea of having a body with 10 people and a lot of jobs to be done, it seems kind of logical that they're going to split off to into smaller groups to be able to to make the work happen, which, I mean, I wasn't here when you two, when it became clear that you were going, when you were going to prepare the document that you that you prepared. But I know when Jen and I did ours, we came out of a conversation like, gee, well, I think maybe, you know, 
the group's feeling was that this should be done. And, you know, the chair said, well, you know, I, is there some people who think they want to do it? So, I mean, volunteer is, you know. Uh, so I think one, another way to look at it for an example would be with the city council, you have established committees that are designated to do certain work. So you have the governance committee, you know, parking, traffic, and safety. Those are independent public bodies that have noticed public hearings and meetings. And that is, you know, designated by the city council, right? Um, so that's a very formal process versus a more informal process. Mm -hmm. And and I, I don't think that the right to know law was intended to prevent public bodies from getting any work done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Right. And you know, people do work better in small groups yeah. than in um to report back. Yeah. Obviously the report back should be on the agenda and the materials right. should be the there. product. The right. product comes right. from it that everybody right. sees. I, I and you'll probably get into this. I think that the bigger concern and you know, natural for all of us who spend all day on the computer is to dialogue whether serially or whatever by email. And and that I think is one of the hardest things for people to understand that we really cannot as a committee, even if only one person is or two people are dialoguing, but if all of us are copied, that's a pure violation of the right to know law. So we have to really hold ourselves back from that. And I said, I don't wanna put Sean in the position of us kind of using him as a foil in that you know, it, it just because we can all communicate with Sean, if we're all copied on it, it's the same problem. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to, we don't want to put him in that awkward position. So right. that, that is, I think, one of my bigger concerns, because I, that's a, I see that at the state, that's what often gets people into, into trouble. And, and there really is trouble here. Uh, there if is. We're violating it. There is. And you know, there's ongoing issues in Nashua in which, you know, for right to know request was for emails of um, city employees and I think the city council. So, um, and it's under litigation and there are concerns about those types of emails that work is being done of the public body that's not being noticed to the public and they're not part of the deliberations. So um, it is best not to, try to do it and run around the right to know law by using email and saying, well, I'm only talking to Bob, but I've copied everybody else because <laughs> yeah. now you've in, you've joined everybody right. into the conversation. And that's a conversation that should happen during the public meeting. Right. So there, you know, we do use very, uh, infrequently, but we do use the method of if we need to send something out to the city council, we'll send it to the mayor and blind copy the rest of the city councilors and tell them not to reply. So there'll be no conversation of the group. Um, and that's the, you know, BCC, blind CC um, process that's used. Some people think that that's, again, you know, cutting too fine a line or, you know, but the interpretation has been um, adopted by the Municipal Association. Um, we recently had training with them with the zoning board. They have the same um, advice until there's another case that goes to the Supreme Court that mm -hmm. is on point. It, we're not gonna get any more definite um, direction but the one thing is that you can't use that process to intentionally subvert mm -hmm. the right to know law. So before email times, say you wanted to have um, to get around the right to know law, to have a meeting with the city councilors, I couldn't put two city councilors in one room and then go to the next room and have two city councilors and the next room. So you could take that and apply that to email, that you shouldn't be having these consecutive discussions um, that eventually involve the entire group or a quorum of your group. A quorum. Yeah. 
Um, one of the things that I've done um, as a committee chair now is I only send things through the staff. Mm -hmm. So I don't send anything even to my committee because I don't want to unintentionally create a quorum of my committee. So I send everything goes through the staff that goes out. And that way, um, the staff member knows what's gone out to everyone. Um, if you have one staff member you communicate with. Mm -hmm. In this case, it's Sean. Yeah. But I, I guess the question is, I'm emailing to this whole group. Is that, in fact, a meeting? That's my question, because I... But you're not a committee member. Okay. Right. Well, but, but you're, but this, you're yeah. joining a quorum of a group in an email chain. Mm -hmm. So the question is, are you discussing, are the members of the group discussing business so of the committee? Versus me sending an FYI yeah, information, yeah. sharing information. Yeah. Like, right. and here's then, the agenda, here's the yeah. date. Right, okay. right. or here's we've the changed document. the time. Yeah. Okay. Do not reply. Okay. Um, do not reply all, do not reply yeah. at all, or to each other. Don't know. Right. So um, that, that's normally what it is, is a push of information. Right. And I'll often remind people not to. Exactly. Respond. So that's that's the approach that we've taken. Okay. Um, I have been asked this in other contexts. And my one advice is if you're sending, say, an informational item that the committee is going to review and discuss, put that informational item on the agenda. Right. So the public has the same it's there for sure you yes. know if you're reviewing an article or report mm -hmm. or study then you should make that part of the public record great thank you so um those are the top the top questions that i usually get um so welcome to answer any questions it takes a while to until you get into the middle of something and then you think wait should i be doing this so if you have a question you're welcome to call us legal you know probably better if you have a question to ask first um rather than subject the city to potential litigation um there are a lot of right to know hawks um yeah. in the state and they make it their business to file suit um, for violations of the right to know law. So um, we do try not to skinny around any of these rules, but I think that our interpretation is a fair interpretation that's consistent with um, the Municipal Association and other government agencies. Um, but if you have questions, um, feel free to give us a call. Thank you. Questions, any? Okay. And Sean can always find us down the hall. <laughs> Thanks, Susan. Thank you. Yeah. You're very welcome. Yeah, it was nice to meet you all. And it's good to be reminded of this every once in a while because it's so different than the rest of our working lives in terms yeah. of how we communicate. Right. It is. And it's, you know, it's contorted because it's, you know, governed by these, you know, technical legal definitions. So um, anytime you need help, we're here to help you. Good. Thank you. So good luck with your rest of your meeting. Thanks. Have a good night. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Good. So let's, um, the minutes of the August 30 meeting would be the first thing. Um, a motion to approve. It's like I'm hearing Alyssa saying yes. A second. Second. Okay. okay. Uh, any corrections? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Um, with the next couple items, I think we should take formal votes. You know, we we haven't done rules yet, but something Bob and I talked about, when we're doing a memo to the city council, something for another board, something that's going to involve money, I think it is important that we have an official vote of the committee. We can do a lot by consensus, but 
some of these things really require votes. So the first thing was the uh, memo to the um, HDC that uh, would go to Peter Britz. And um, you had this as a as a uh, example. This really kind of memorializes the conversation we had with Margot Doring. And um, I think we probably should just for um, process have um, have a vote to approve it and then we'll have discussion. So does someone want to move uh, approval of that memo? Oh, which memo? So moved. Ellen, a second? So Melissa, okay. Mm -hmm. um, discussion. I just had a question, which is, did we get any clarification or updates from the planning director on whether or not they can flag public art at the application process. Okay. We didn't get clarification, but I believe Kate, when you reported last time, it's something that they're working on. Yes. It's something that they're working on and that the legal department is working on because it's part of a much bigger issue around signs and signage in the city. So, um, so some of those definitions need to be reviewed. Okay. Uh, any other questions, Bob? Um, so do, does it wait for anything? Um, or do you see this as, this is something that we can send to the planning director? That, that's what you're proposing, right? Uh, yes. And then he can use it as discussion with the which the with the HDC. That sounds great. I, my only concern is I I want to make sure that we're not just adding to the um, bureaucratic process right. that we're you know being a solution, not a problem, not an obstacle. Mm -hmm. Oh, and and that's and been... there's plenty of obstacles already. Yeah. That's been but my editorializing. That's but, a huge part of the discussion that we've yeah. been having is um, finding ways to give people an option for review here rather than a requirement for review. Right. Um, noting that they might end up back here anyway and <laughs> requesting a review right. um, because you don't want them to lengthen their process. Right. Yeah. And presumably if they let's say if they had a favorable review from us, that should save them time. And because, you know, one of the challenges I see is when when a committee like an HTC asks for more information, that's another month that, <laughs> and another lawyer's fee uh, or that they have to come back multiple times. So presumably if we could provide some information that should help that. Right. So they, this needs to get put into a form that goes to Peter. And, Peter yes. Yeah. Okay. How are we do that? Any other comments on it? Clarifications? Then all in favor of sending this to the planning director, signify aye. Uh, hi. Aye. Aye. Jen, okay. All right. That's good. Um, I, I will note that uh, the sign thing I, I did there was a board of adjustment hearing on another mural uh, last week. And while they did pass, not all members voted in favor because they, the reason for dissenting was that we don't have a mural ordinance right. that distinguishes murals from signs. Now, most of the members felt that because we don't have a such an ordinance, they could vote in favor. Mm -hmm. And it's the mural that's going on the liar's bench uh, of uh, Sarah Orne Jewett. Uh, but it did raise the legal issue. So we may want to, um, you know, at some point have a similar thing with the Board of Adjustment, but that might wait until we right. have this mural sign. Ordinance. Isn't there another, I just think I saw in Seacoast Online that there's a mural outside of um, Runner's Alley? Yeah, Nakata. Yep. I saw that. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that just grew. 
I don't know. Just grew. I saw that overnight too. (laughs) I mean, it was. I read it and thought, "What was it?" I think it's the same artist as the um as the dragon, Mm -hmm. the tiger, the tiger, the Korean tiger. Yeah, I think it's the same artist. It it it's in the alley um by the music hall. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But you're right. I mean, officially. It, under our ordinance, that would be considered a sign by somebody. Um, <laughs> so it's it's an interesting point. <laughs> mm-hmm. and, and so that there's no question in the future. That's why we need this mural yeah, right. ordinance. We need to clarify this so that we can or have things. Currently, like and I'm sorry. And part of the reason that you want to clarify this is. Um, around the HDC and the HDC's decisions, because usually the HDC is only supposed to weigh in on materials. Um, and if they allow paint, and this is something that I've worked been working with on legal, if they allow paint, then you can't say what the paint looks like because that's not in their purview. Right. So if that's paint, the building's already painted and they're just painting, does the HDC really have purview over that? So, um, so there are questions there that are not clear Mm -hmm. um, because the way that they've been interpreted in the past, but they're not interpreted that way when my neighbor, my neighbor just across the street painted their house pink, right? Right. And uh, someone asked me, well, that's not a historic color. And I'm like, well, we don't have rules around what color you can and can't paint. So it's the same with murals. If you can paint. I I can tell you where that painting issue came from. When we re- drafted the original historic district ordinance, we specifically exempted that because our position was it didn't do any damage to the historic fabric of a building. And a week later, it could be painted a different color. Um, and we didn't need to get into that um, as, a, as an issue could, because that's one of the first things that people said, you're not going to tell me how to paint yeah. my my house and we said you're not we're right we're not <laughs> right and that's and what that are some communities that do that regulate do. paint yeah. colors oh yeah so yes. oh there are right and yeah. so i'm sure the concern came because people yeah. knew yeah. that there were places that oh yeah did that. like nantucket was yes. very rigid i mean they have like six colors or something like that that you can paint your house and there was a gentleman in durham maybe about 30 years ago who oh, used yeah, paint that's, that's as exactly a right. very very tactical device to get back the yep. historic committee yep. for telling him what to do with his houses that's exactly right it was quite striking <laughs> yeah. but anyway well yeah these but but it, this this does test the issue so it'll be interesting for us to follow this but i mean i think that paint and paint that pictures things and this may be a different well i sorry. think currently they we only get confused with murals if there are words mm-hmm. Involved. So, if this new mural is just paint without words, then it's not a sign. Unless it, it, unless people interpret it as a logo or something that a, right. it has a, something. conveys a expression of a commercial business. Yeah, and it could convey concepts that that's right. We don't want that that are really not appropriate for public discourse. Well, that's. I mean, but it's, not, it's, it's this is all a very fine line. I remember when TD Bank, you know, they used their green color and they wanted to use the green uh, along the um, edge of their building. And I believe they were turned down for that because that was interpreted as, as, a, as their a logo. logo. And it took more signage than than they were allowed. So, yeah. Anyway, anyway it's, <laughs> so it's another new mural. <laughs> So, um, so we'll we'll deal with this HDC one, and now on to the Love Locks, and maybe Bob, you can sure. Take us. So, um, I volunteered to draft this, and then I, Chris and I discussed it. Um, we, as a result of that discussion, we made some minor changes to it, and then um, I had some, um, one person give me some additional feedback. And as a result, I handed out, and I think I handed it out to everybody except you, Alyssa, because you weren't here. Um, 
there were basically one sen two sentences that were changed and one paragraph that was added. Um, and I handed that out tonight. The, one, the sentence that was changed was uh, under conclusions and recommendations. Um, we basically, I we dropped uh, uh, two sentences that were deemed to be unnecessary. And so just now it's one sentence that says, it was determined the objects do not constitute public art under the city's definition. And I took out the remainder of the- Where, can you just- it would be, It's right under conclusions and oh, recommendations okay. on the third page. It's the first sentence. paragraph was- it's, it's, it's in bold. Right there. But I mean, what paragraph did you it's change? The first, that, the first one. The first paragraph. Okay. So it, that's- um, and then the other change was um, giving an interim solution, and that's in the last paragraph. Of the entire document. Of, of the one docu of the document I handed out tonight. Okay. And that's that's new and was not in there. Just read that. And so uh, just again for process, let's have a, a motion to uh, approve this and then we'll open discussion. Okay. May I ask that someone read that last one to me since I didn't get a copy? Oh, oh. sure. Yeah, I can read it. Uh, in the interim, before a specific Lovelock's art piece is created, the city could replace uh, a few sections of the fence where most of the locks are located in parentheses near the left corner of the park facing the water. The padlocks could be removed from the old fence by cutting the wi fence wires and saving the padlocks for future installation on a new art piece if the city deems it that a practical solution. Then. Thanks. Okay. So a uh, motion to approve Mara. I'll move to I'll approve. Second. And second for Nancy. Second. And now discussion. Uh, Nancy, did you have a? No, nope, I was just going to second or make a motion. Yeah. So because this, because people might be listening to this uh, tape, um, the the essence is using our, the definition of public art that appears in the original ordinance. This finds, um, this memo finds that this doesn't really meet the definition of public art, though uh, we see people have um, value in what's been done. And so the memo goes on to describe some ways that that value might be preserved. Mara? I, I, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's an anomalous kind of thing. And, you know, I think and I think there's no reason not to say, well, it, you know, because it's made out of these uh, store bought and off the shelf padlocks and, you know, a chain link fence, you know, not high art, not materials that meet the definition of art. You know, the, 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 we could say that for because it's, you know, you can understand it, but I just have to, you know, the devil's advocate in me says, you know, I could really picture, you know, with taking this at the proposal that we have about, you know, how to evaluate art, I could see a person who is using these materials in an extremely artistic, innovative, yes. you know, exciting sort of way. Right. So it just is where I am a little uneasy with that being our major reason not to have it, or a major stated reason that it's not I a think thing we want. That's why you took that out. Is that correct, Bob? What yeah. took out that? Well, that yeah. shall not. So be I'll, I'll speak it's... up as the person who gave the the feedback. Basically, previously this said it doesn't meet the city art because, but and we all went on to say it doesn't meet any definition of art because it does uses these sort mass of mass produced mass items. produced materials. So. My interpretation was, well, there are lots of art that uses mass-produced materials. Absolutely. We can't really go that far, Ru but we can say it doesn't meet our state, our definition, 
and leave it at that. Right. And that's Rauschen, Rauschenberg used cardboard boxes. Absolutely, that's right. uh, correct. <laughs> um, Robert uh, um, Gary used um, cyclone fence on his um, right. architect Absolutely. personal house. So I mean, it it, it is used. And, but um, I think by itself, it I, could be, you know, one could speak more to intentional. Well, that's why, that's why that's the why, definition yeah. is quoted there of enduring original artworks of the highest quality and craftsmanship. That's why the uh, we use the definition that is of public art rather than focus on the materials. It's okay, about good. intention. Mm -hmm. Right, but you are talking about the materials. I mean, neither chain link fencing or padlock can be considered enduring art materials. Of I, I think those were the things taken out. Correct? Really, isn't this the new one that you just gave out? Yes. So it's in it. Right, but I guess I'm confused. the The definition the definition hasn't changed. That's that's what our definition. The one the, the on page. Two on the bottom. The the public art definition, that's that's in the ordinance. Yeah. Right. That has not changed. So um, it would be a different conversation if we is. were talking about changing our ordinance to it, right. But I mean, but <laughs> where are so telling them that this is why we don't want it. That's because of our ordinance, which says right. that mass produced uh objects that are mass produced from a standard design, et cetera are by our definition. I just wanted to say it's not by any definition. There is a definition where mm -hmm. it could be considered art, but ours doesn't admit it. Right, but if we were considering a work of art that was using those materials mm -hmm. as, you know, if it were, say, Rauschenberg, sure. we and, and that's wouldn't why necessarily be saying that this isn't what we... Right, but that's why it goes on to say... That we could see something specifically designed for the purpose, that there could, in fact, be using those materials. If you look at the um, third paragraph from the bottom in the conclusion, that you could create an artistic structure using those materials, but you would want to create something for it, not just have people start uh, putting things together. So I think it's it's your point. You could create, you could use those materials to create such a structure. That's okay. what that third paragraph from the bottom says. And I guess the question is, is that not is that not clear? Well, uh, it. I would hate somebody, you know, sitting higher up to be looking at a work of art that was submitted that was using such similar materials and saying, well, committee, you just told us that, uh, you know, we can't consider, you know, these are these love locks and the fences aren't works of art. And now you're asking us to approve a work that's made from the same lowly materials. It's anyway. Yeah. So I'm wondering how it can be clearer than that third paragraph where it says we've seen examples of structures designed and built for the purpose that could carry the weight of the padlocks in a manner that has artistic merit and unique design, right? I, 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 I'm getting the sense that this is a bigger conversation than what we're talking about. Sure. So in my minutes, I'm saying there's some discussion around the city's definition of what constitutes public art. Further discussion to revisit that definition will occur because we're... Yeah, we don't need to talk about right, it now. Exactly. I 100% agree with you. And I don't think that this was written to prevent ordinary materiality, but right, right. just, but it's a good catch on both of your parts because it does seem like it is limiting. And so I feel like if we say that's a good discussion, we flagged it, we'll talk about that definition yeah. later, we can, yeah. It's, yeah. We had, and we were, we were gonna bring up other problems with the definition anyway, so we know we need to do that. Yeah. But, I struggled with this too. Yeah, I, I just, great. Um, yeah, I, I just struggled with the idea because there are 
so many things that are made um, yep. become works of art that start out as um, a, a group of people doing something together somehow, and then it evolves into something with meaning for and could be considered a work of art. Mm -hmm. So how do we create the parameters for that and draw the lines and do whatever? So I think um, the criteria, which I know we're going to discuss next, actually help with that, the criteria yeah. that you guys have evolved, because the whole reason this came to us is that it violates one of those criteria of danger and falling down. And so using the criteria actually helps in this particular instance. It doesn't say that you couldn't use those materials it says in this particular instance this doesn't meet those criteria yeah. but it's also saying so if you let's say you cut out the fencing with all the locks attached and you and you created and you put it someplace and yeah. then gussied it up or whatever and then said this is a work of art that would be okay I think that's what the last paragraph suggests. Well, that well, actually, the idea was to save the locks because they have the meaning to the people that put them on. Right. Okay. And then they could have been, be incorporated in a piece of art at a, at a later point. But but my point, Bob, was if if Chris is saying the real issue here is the fact that they're too heavy, they're, they're the... Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah, the objects are affixed to something that can't yeah. really support their weight. Right. And that's, so that's correct. it's creating a danger, yep. a dangerous situation. Yep. And, but no, but, but they could still be considered a work of art. Right. If, they might if they, if they cut the fencing and it got affixed somewhere, the that's whole, right. that whole right. piece. And, and remember, it, it, this it, is public art. This is not right. just a work of art. This is art where the public should be able. That's why the criteria yeah. are so important, because if I cut this up and put it in my yard and considered it art, no problem, right? <laughs> Artwork. But if I'm putting it in a place where it's going to fall down on the public, which right. is why these have been removed all over the world, because they've collapsed. Crazy. They, fallen down people have cut themselves on yeah. them and so you can go on the internet as you know and find yeah. hundreds of cities where they've been removed because of the site danger not because they're you know you couldn't yourself decide it's a work of art i came into this saying this is absolutely art <laughs> and then i read the definition no, not not here, not not under this. Mm -hmm. so not the way it is currently displayed, quote unquote. Well, it's not really. the way our ordinance or is written. Yes, yes. it's not yeah. a definition. Yeah. Kate, okay, um, yeah. I think thank you. It, it's important to note that the legal department wrote this definition, um, and so attorneys wrote the definition, and no, um, they didn't. That they that's yes. Um, I mean, I was at the birth. Of the well, original ordinance. Yes, but the definition was changed that here for this ordinance for this committee, and it was it was done by the legal department, kind of in opposition of making sure that they were creating a differential against a sign against something that we know that legal has to work on. And this is the definition from the original 17, 1.1701, the original ordinance. Right. But there were additions, the additional, um, the shall not include section. Some of this was added and it was added in, intentionally to, to create that distinction, knowing that this committee would ultimately have its own recommendations back to the council right. for what this committee wants to do. So knowing that nobody in our legal department is an expert on public art. And so they they borrowed very, very liberally from the original definition that was given and added some caveats. So- And so, we have a problem. With that. Exactly. Yeah. So, and that's fine. And that's what the assumption is, is that it will come back um, and that this committee will create its own right. ideas around yeah. it. So, oh, but I, I, re I recognize what you're saying that the definition in the park ordinance is different. Yes. This because I myself Wrote copied this. it from the original one. I know that the one that appears in this memo is the original. Yeah. Yes. Because I copied and pasted. Right. 
it it actually is another section of the of the ordinance. So they're, they're and they're not quite um, um, identical. Along. Yes, they're not exactly aligned, oh, and so um, that's that's where we knew this committee would probably come yeah. back, and this this committee will probably come back with changes to its ordinance anyway. Yeah, right. at some point. So. I I feel I mean I feel there really is a very compelling reason to you know support taking it down and very clearly you know doing that which is that it's a danger and that is kind of like a no, it's 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 one of those things that nobody wants to to see and 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 from what I understand when it's being taken down in Paris and other cities where this has happened, it's it's following that logic too. It's not us, but see, I came at it from a totally different point of view than you because I thought, oh God, you know, get rid of the love locks. But the more I thought about it, the more I think, no, all right. The more I think, well, you know, well, we have to decide what to do, et cetera. But the less enthusiastic I am, because I think that they're a really interesting piece of process art. I think that they are they are commemorative, you know. I mean, the reason that not at all to compare them to it in in in, in meaningfulness and 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 a lot of things. But you know, you think about why the Vietnam War Memorial took off to be such an important, meaningful, moving structure. You know, I mean, a lot of people thought it was it was you know, just crap, you know, like a gouge in the earth with names on it. But, you know, people go there, they they leave things, they take rubbings, they cry, they interact. And, you know, that it, it's, that was the decision, you know, that was the work of one single artistic consciousness, right. you know, but she had input and it was proved by the people who are on the committee who saw that design and took it instead of more conventional ones. And no one, I think nobody who approved it understood how it would impact. But it, it clearly was an enduring original artwork. That was an enduring original artwork. Yeah. Right. And, but, I, and that's what we're talking about, enduring original. And when I can go on Wikipedia and find a hundred bazillion examples I'm not sure it's an original artwork. Interesting. <laughs> I would just like yeah. to inject into the conversation for anybody watching, because I think this is something that people are interested in. This committee is not recommending taking down the love locks. Like, I don't want that to be a headline right. anywhere. No. The city, right. This recommendation is for the city to continue the tradition and build upon it in another location right. that safety. does not compromise public that's safety right. and a structure. Right. Yeah, so I just want to make that clear. really clear yeah. Yeah. in our conversation yeah. right now. Cause right. when somebody on the, when somebody says, you know, we're recommending to take it down that that's all somebody's going right. to hear. I just wanted right. to say it loud and clear. That's yeah. not what this committee is recommending. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Nancy. Yes. Thanks. I, I, <laughs> and, and it also kicks off the discussion that I, I think people agree that it doesn't fit our definition of public art. That right. doesn't mean we're not valuing it right. and doing, as you said, Nancy, but we're also saying as the definition stands, it doesn't, align with the definition right that doesn't mean the definition might not change but it doesn't align with our current definition do we need to vote on this we but, will. Uh, i think yeah i think it has to, it's a re recommendation to send the memorandum to the city council yes. yeah jen you haven't had a chance to weigh in no i'm i'm <laughs> oh <laughs> okay um, we feel for you. Um, are we ready to vote or do people have other things that they haven't said? Okay. So as Bob said, the vote is to recommend that the memo go to city council as a representation of the discussion. I would like to amend the motion and say that it should not just be 
sent to the city council. I think it should be presented to the city council by somebody from sure. the committee. Makes sense. Very clearly explaining Very good, what Nancy. I just said. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That seems like a friendly right. amendment to that. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Excellent. Thank you. There's a slight, uh, the date was yes, August 20, 31st, just in the first line. It was what? It was August 31st. Oh, at its meeting. I see. Never mind. Okay. 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 All right. So that's one. All right. Now on to the criteria. I think it's good to discuss that before. Um, the discussion of the criteria, actually, because, um, you know, I think, um, Jen and Mara, you did a masterful job of taking that discussion that we had, a uh, freewheeling discussion and bringing, bringing um, edits into this. Um, if anyone needs copies, they're going around. And this is the same as what you were sent, right? Um, so I think again, a motion to that we can a motion to approve these as our guidelines, and then we can discuss and make any amendments. So Mara, do you want to make that motion as okay? I can I can I make that motion? Sure. I so move. I second. Right. <laughs> <laughs> So um, discussion, I think there might be a few things that people found points, any things you want to bring up? What, one thing is we need to, you know, deal with this definition thing at the beginning, because mm -hmm. we've got two definitions working. We've got the one from the original ordinance, and we've got the Public Art Review Committee. Mm -hmm. We could put both of them in at this point. I, I don't see any reason to hold it up for that. Was it the committee's suggestion that the definition be put in here at the meeting that I missed? Yes. Yes. I mean, I did. Yeah. Are you talking about adding the the definition that we that we were just discussing and that was exactly. in the program? Exactly. So that would go in here as well. Yeah. Couldn't we just reference? We the... could reference it. Oh yeah. Because I reference been... both of them and yeah. Um... Because it seems like you know, if you then you have three pages of read. Well, you're right. We before you get to the very simple right. stuff yeah. that you want people to be able to understand and follow. I'm sorry. What are we referencing? Well, instead of putting the definitions in, referencing the definitions, you know, to where they can be found in is, ordinance. Yeah. Which is section uh, one. Point one seven zero one, which is the, the original definition that was enacted by the city. Mm -hmm. So one um, small, I think, clarification, and I don't have great wording for this, but it's the last bullet in aesthetics. And this is one that I know we talked about adding. The artwork must have historical accuracy when appropriate. Um, and I, I think we need to build that out a little bit more, maybe saying uh, historical accuracy when the artwork is intended to reflect a historical event, a historical personage, you know, something that gives a little more. Um, or maybe even well, if, 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 it's, if, if it's it is. meant. Yeah. Right. If intended. Yeah. A historical person, event. Place or place, right? And the other categories. I mean, I think that's defining what appropriate could be. Exactly. Right. Any Just... other brainstorming thoughts? Well, I'm trying. I'm thinking of the example that Margot gave about whales. Whales. But if we say if the intent is. Someone could say, well, my intent is not to talk about what happened here. I just like whales. I don't know. <laughs> that, well, that is a little, <laughs> maybe a little squishy, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, a little mammaly. Mm -hmm. yeah. like... Well, you know, if you're, in, I mean, and just thinking about the whales, you know, if you're a lot, that's not actually, 
I mean, the history is the whaling, I guess. I know, yeah. I know. I was just to the fishing for other kinds of. Wow. I thought, I thought intent might be an yeah. arguable thing, but. But what? But in that real example, if somebody did the difference between coming and saying, uh, "We're going to put an artwork up that um, suggests." Um, what the whaling industry was like in New England right. versus we're going to show what Portsmouth maritime history was like. Yeah. You know, they both have intent mm -hmm. and one, one is hard, harder to argue than another. I mean, nobody argued with the whale walls, right? right? Um, yeah. But they did seem to have great concern about it being misinterpreted as representative of Portsmouth, even if the person's intent right. was not to represent Portsmouth. But, but maybe <laughs> if we had this language, they wouldn't have that problem. We wouldn't have that problem. I see. Yeah. <laughs> this is for right. us. Exactly. I also think there was, in that instance, there was a communication problem because I actually think the intent was to showcase the blackjacks right not the whaling industry that was just a right. product mm -hmm. so You're that right. is historic mm -hmm. the blackjacks did come from portsmouth and they did go out all, all over the world yeah so mm. so that might have been a miscommunication yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. okay. i mean in a lot of you know history is complex and varied and yeah. not everybody knows right. all the little ins and outs and subtleties like the blackjacks for instance a person might not even think, right. wow, mm -hmm. that's one major Portsmouth connection to the whaling and industry. If, right. if I think of this as recommendations to us, that encourages mm -hmm. us to ask for that mm -hmm. deeper context yes. if we were looking at to it. To look yes. for the history. I mean, I guess we want to, you know, look for the his for the historical veracity and legitimacy of what what is is done to the best that we know it at the time that we're approving yeah. whatever it is because you know i mean i think that my knowledge of portsmouth history has really expanded a lot in the past 30 years you know i mean and, and not just my knowledge but based on the research that people have done and things that people have found and you know connections that have been made so you just don't want, I mean, I think we want, I mean, I wasn't here when you, I heard, I heard you make it on Zoom, it was a miracle of Zoom of, uh, uh, but it, you, I mean, if I say you don't, we don't want to be, we don't want works to tell lies. That's right. Or to create fictions that aren't useful. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so does that wording work for people if we sure. something like that? Oh, well, we could put that in and say, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, of course. You know, so the appropriate when if the uh, historical accuracy, if the artwork reflects a histor historical persons, places, arts, events, events, et cetera, et cetera. Places, <laughs> events, et cetera. Okay. Just in case yes. we're not thinking of what. I think, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Other historical things. Any, All right. So that sounds good. Yeah. Any other um anything else, Ellen? Um, I had a the uh under site, the accessibility one. Okay, where um, are we? Accessibility to proposed all artwork for all individuals. That's a very strong statement. Yeah. And um, I worry that we can't live up to it in yeah. some way or another. Um, if it turns out to be something that um, requires somebody to uh, get up close to a certain part of it and the person is unable to physically do that. Um, I, I just wonder, um, I wonder if we need to qualify this or if I'm reading into it. And it says, especially those with special needs, so um, I, I, I don't know if we're saying that 
we have to assure accessibility yeah. or that, that we have to difficult. work to make it accessible in some way, whether that that could be yeah. using cameras that people can, you know, so that they could see it if they couldn't physically be there. Or what, I just wondered about how, you know, I don't want somebody to come back at us and say, yeah. um, you said that this was accessible to everybody. Yeah, yeah. that's a good point. Yeah, almost well, like I, I it's, think you um, could add the phrase to, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, interrupt. go ahead. You have a word. To, to the, uh, was those with special me needs to the maximum extent feasible. I'm sorry, could you to say To the maximum extent feasible. I mean, because, yeah. I mean, that, that's fine. What I, I just, yeah. I, I just read it and I thought it's one of those things that somebody could yeah. use think, one way if they chose that, to. Yeah. I hear you. I mean, that sort of, it, it, the, um, the finality, you know, the, the positivity of that kind of worried me, mm -hmm. you know, so, so Bob, this is where the feasibility. Possibly. Okay. Um, well, I mean, I guess I have, if it's in a public way that, you know, the Americans with Disabilities Act covers accessibility to mm -hmm. of lots of things. And I think it is a reasonable thing for us to think if somebody proposes a piece of art up a trail that's, you have to climb a tree to get there, you know, is that appropriate for us to say that's where we would want to invest in public that, art? That's a good point. So I think... You know, most public ways are already covered by accessibility. But if you think laws. of blind, uh, you know, if you think of all the other yeah. kinds of disabilities, if if we just said accessibility to proposed art works, including et cetera, to the maximum extent feasible, I think that would yes. cover it. It's the all individuals, yeah, yeah. line in there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, it, I would, I would yeah. take that out too. I, I would so agree with all of this, but also saying yes. that it is something for us to think about. Yes, it will the, kick it the off manner of the accessibility. Right. Um, mm -hmm. so, yeah. All right. So you want we want to say accessibility to the proposed artworks to the maximum for to the maximum extends yeah. max so forget take out for all individuals and yes put in to the maximum extent feasible yeah right. those two changes anything else can we uh then vote on it with those two amendments that we've made um all in favor of using these as our working guidelines there? Hi. Uh, <laughs> and great thanks to the two of you. Mm -hmm. I think this is really As good. I think Jen said last time, it was fun. It was, even though we were meeting by ourselves and having coffee. And, That's why you volunteered. because <laughs> And enjoying various <laughs> venues. <laughs> I think we have people wanting to use our room. So Sorry. let me give the quick announcements and then we can pick this up next time. Um, I did submit uh, for a, a CIP request, $25,000 a year placeholder. And Kate, if you would um, let us know when the hearing is going to be, I don't, that well, we can advocate for um, why yes. we're putting that in. Yes. Um, I, you should know that the planning board has already discussed the request but there is going to be a council. There's a subgroup of the council that will go through all the requests. So. Okay, good. Um, Ellen and I met and we began to pick up on where Nancy started a list of public art um, for the map that we're talking about. We already have over 50. And what we want to do is once we fill out that list a little more, circulate it with all of you so you can add more to it. Um, and then we'll begin the building the paragraphs and the photos. I think it's it's pretty incredible how much has happened in the last decade, really. Uh, we talked about resolving conflicts in the ordinance. We're gonna have a longer talk about that. <laughs> um, we heard from Ernie Greenslade that the uh, Ms. Sautel, who was going to donate the bell, does not want it to be outside. Um, and so she will donate the bell to the city and Ernie will uh, probably come back to us with, I will have ideas for 
where the bell might be inside historical society, library, whatever. Um, and that I think, oh, I don't think we need to reschedule the November meeting if we think of it as the last November 29th rather than the fourth. Bob and I were a little confused about that. Right. And if we think of it the last, it's the week after Thanksgiving. That Is works. that like Thanks, after Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving is the, tw the 23rd. Yeah. Uh, so it's and we were going to meet, I think we we're going to meet the 22nd, right? But but, yeah, but the, if we do the last, the 9th, 29th, we're, we're okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, okay. And then we do need, you know, we, we really do need to um, begin the Pierce Island Public Art Commission where we can start looking at the sites. We can think, set up a committee. I think we'll want to look at your RFP model that you used last time for the garage and see how we can adapt that. So we can we can hopefully devote some good time to that at our next meeting. Yes, I yeah, make a public service. If, if you get invited to participate in the cultural plan focus group, please please try to be heard. When will those happen, John? Um, the week of October 16th, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 16th, 17th, 18th. Good. Okay. Hopefully, you've all got an invitation from somebody. Great. Thank you. And one more thing, I don't know if we have any public comment. Are you here to comment? No. Well, you're waiting for the next. Okay. All right. And we don't have anybody else. Sure, gave room. it away. So a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Great. Thank you all. Goodbye. Bye. See you next time. Better. See you. Thank Bye. you. Better.